Hello guys, this is Al and welcome to this episode and uh, welcome to uh, my server cloud where we're going to show you how to install some uh, open source stuff you know, for your server, or lab or whatever. Uh, we're looking at different type of open source um, web panels and as you know, you, you know, maybe in the channel I always talked about web panel. In fact, I was the first one to uh, start with a web panel application, open source, as you might know. Uh, let's go to oldest Z panel. There we go. That's where I started. This is exactly how I started 12 years ago. So let's go back. I never talked about uh, Astia. This is another web panel. It's open source. And today I'm going to show you how I install it on my Proxmox. Again, I usually use it for uh, tutorials and we do test things once in a while to see what we can offer at a low price to customers, right? Again, this is not my business. I only do tutorials for uh, my server cloud. So I said, so let's start. I already got a, you know, an instance already, a VM running last year, but I'm going to show you how to install another one, okay? So it's very simple. I'm going to go to hostname. I'm going to call it web panel. And I'm going to choose the main pool uh, password. And there we go. Uh, if you do this live for a live environment, make sure you have a SSH public key. You don't want to use passwords. Um, unless you use a really powerful, you know, long one. But yeah, make sure you use, make sure you're safe, all right? Um, that's what you want to do, SSH public keys. So templates, I'm going to choose a uh, Ubuntu, Get lost. Uh, here we go. Where are we? Yeah, let's choose this one here. I'm going to choose 20.04 for this one. 25 local VM. Uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it that, even though it's a very low. I will get an error for this one just because I, I haven't set the uh, threshold for that. But anyway. 25 gig, that's what we want there. Go next. I'm going to add uh, two memory. I don't know. Let's do this. 1024 for now. We don't really care. Network. I'm going to use DHCP because I'm going to add a static IP for this machine through my router, right? So, yeah, that's it. So DNS, I'm going to leave it as it is as well. That will be automatically changed when I'm installing Astia. And just in case it doesn't do it, to go for the uh, default, I'm going to add uh, my own one. So next, and I'm going to start off created. That shouldn't really take that long. Then the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to run the update for Ubuntu, and then I start the installation, all right? That is the installation lines. That's only two lines. That's what we need. And the configuration options, I'm going to add, you know, uh, I'm going to show you in a second. I'm going to do it anyway. So that's task is done. Let's go to web panel. Let's wait until it starts. Root and the password. That is the one I added when um, created the container. And then I'm doing the upgrade. That takes a little bit longer, but let's press Y. While it's doing it, let's go back here and let's have a look. So. Configure mail again, mail account. And I'm gonna do this. I also want my SQL installed. Uh, Pro FTTP. Let's do this one as well. File system quarter. Multi HPP, uh, PHP, not PPP, whatever. HP, and you go. English. All right, yeah, well, let's do this. Uh, host name, you can actually add a host name if you wanted to. Or automatically, it will get from the 
the installation in this case will be web panel so I'm gonna leave it blank here okay uh, we got Apache we got clamp my DB filter brand as yeah I'm happy with this all right I'm gonna copy that okay all right and uh, when that the upgrade is done we start the installation but no more on that There we go uh, that's been done so we copy the first line that we get so we're going to get the installation file usually double get is uninstalled so we should have an error and then install double get oh actually it's already been installed anyway if you have a problem just say apt install double get all right and of course i already got installed so it won't install anything if you have an error all right so that's what you want to do so that's been done and let's copy the next line and that is the actual installation then i'm going to press enter and let's start All right, so the first error we got here, and again, it's not type of error because something's already been installed, or it was already installed somehow. That is post fix. So I'm going to press, would you like to remove the conflict package? I'm going to say yes. All right, so now we get the STR panel installation. Uh, so technically all you want to say yes or no would you like to go ahead and do it so i'm going to press y and enter the admin email address so um, let's add my email address as you can see web panel he went and have a look the host name from the installation on proxmox so that's correct and here we go the installation started right as stated here it takes about between 10 and 15 minutes depends on the server on proxmox usually takes around 15 minutes with the configuration that i put on so yeah grab a coffee all right so it takes a little bit of time while the installation is going uh, just want to go back on the uh, installation instructions here if you have any issues or errors it doesn't want to go further just go on force installation and then repeat by copy the the new line and uh, you should be okay and you should have any any issues all right we are nearly in the end so uh, only a few minutes i think and uh, it should be okay the beauty with asia is also come with the round cube pre-installed so you don't have to do anything outside you know the thing pro ftpd for the ftp uh, server everything ready to go and spam us and say no cloud AV, whatever so yeah everything is there for you ready to go um, i like hester because it's very lightweight and it's good if you want to use it just for your domains for example for your hosting cpanel is pretty good but again you gotta pay licensing this one is free i do like uh, you know and i've done it before you know other uh, cyber panel you know many different panels but i think this one is really really good simple to use as you know i'm going to show you in a minute and again you know you don't want too much information and everything is in one place easy to file you know, to find it so yeah you know um, i really like it we are about 15 minutes mark already now and still going but it looks like it looks like everything is nearly done uh, I just went to webpanel.myservercloud.co.uk and uh, yes, is they're working on it. So technically, it's still under 
uh, installation. So yeah, let's wait a few extra minutes. While still installing, let's go and uh, let's have a look at the uh, documentation for us here. Right, so we, the minimum actually for the CPU is one core, one gig, 10 gig of space, and this is what is compiled with the 2004, that's the one we use, or 22.04, again, it's up to you which one. You can have a Debian 10, 11, or 12, okay? The recommended is uh, 4 core, 4 gig of RAM, and 40 gig SSD, all right? Again, the latest Ubuntu or Debian. That's the long term, okay? Now, to access the GUI of the Astia, we need port 8083, and that's what we're gonna use once we're done here. Let's go and, did you say 8083? Let's see what happens. Again, HTTPS, uh, I'm not sure if I put it. There we go. Uh, I don't know if it's already done or yeah, still going. So it, it might take a little bit long. All right, let's uh, let's wait. I presume the web panel, let's say like that, the actual uh, page is already up. So the HTTPC is all right. BS is still right. So the actual, it does take in time really. I mean, we're already on 21 minutes mark. So yeah. All right, so the installation has been completed. We got the address, we got the username, and we also got the password. Make sure you save the password, okay? Then we press any key to continue, and then it took about 25 or 26 minutes. So let's go back to my server panel there. It should work okay. All right. Let's do it in a totally different way. Let's do 192, 168. There we go. We got this one here, 8083. Not sure if it's restarted or something. So yeah, the actual technically restarted again. I don't know why, and that's why I wasn't able to um, access the actual panel. So username is the one a. The password we logged in. Login. I'm updating this one here for now. There we go, and we got the Asia panel installed. So yeah, let's go back to the documentation. Everything you need is here. I'm going to leave the link in the description below, by the way. Um, and yes, you can actually access through the IP as well, if you're on the IP, all right? So that is the other, again, as I said, this is very simple to, uh, to use you got the users the web again here you put your web addresses uh let's have a look here does it open yeah and again we got the same page we had before um uh, stop fine view logs uh suspend the delete i presume uh no i didn't want to do that let's click on this here we go here so we can actually install apps as well on this one here so i can set up press the shop wordpress just by one click and you got the best and the most used application open cat press the shop for e-commerce you got drupal and wordpress for cms you got grav 
again, Wiki, Laravel. I mean, you got a few things here. I mean, I don't think you need anything else. If I would use this, I would use it for WordPress mainly anyway. So yeah, I got what I needed. Here you can control your DNS. You can add the DNS for zones or last stuff. Mail, you can add your email addresses here. Oh, right. Again, I don't have any users at the moment. So yeah, that's what it is. I won't use the admin. I will create a user and then I will add the e the domains for that user, right? Here you can actually add your cron jobs and here is the backup. Simple as, this is very simple as I said. This is the actual file manager. Inside here you put whatever you need, I presume is HTML, right? Let's go back, exit control panel. Here you go the settings, you can configure, basic options, and host names as well. SSL, you got the self-signed. Again, if you want, you can add the um, Let's Encrypt, right? You could do that as well. Network, you can actually look at the IP addresses, okay? If you have a multiple IP addresses, you can do that as well from here, all right? DNS bind is installed. Here you can actually change your byte configuration. Be careful what you're doing. Uh, let's go back. Here you got all the services running, except SSH that usually starts disabled uh, or stopped in that way. And you can start it here if you wanted to, all right? Here is all the PHP versions, okay? Then you go the firewall. This is what comes as a standard. Here you can actually add more if you wanted to. You can uh, IP list, blacklist, whatever you want to do, accept, deny, yeah. Here is the main user, in this case, the admin. The root is not accessible. Again, don't forget to disable root, right? For here, right? Because that's quite important. If you want to make sure, if you use it as your own server, make sure you disable root, okay? We got here all the statistics, all right? And again, for the mail, once you create an account, Again, you gotta do a user, and once you create the user, you can attach any domain names you want, all right? But that's how you do it. So yeah, this is how, this is how simple it is to install STR. It doesn't take long, and it's, as you can see, it's quite easy to use, you know, to use it. And you don't need a lot of experience to set up. All right, guys, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little video, and um, I'll see you next time when I make a new video. If you like it, press like button. If you subscribe, you won't miss any other video I make in the future. I don't make as much as I used to. Again, this is my server cloud now. And that's it. I'll see you next time, guys.